Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Center for Cinephiles, where we talk about movies and movie related things. Today I'm going to talk about a film called A Vigilante starring Olivia Wilde. You may know her from the TV show House. You may know her from the uh, Cowboys and Aliens movie. Uh, she just recently directed the film Booksmart that is uh, pretty popular right now. A lot of people really like it. And um, I haven't seen it yet, so, uh, but I hope to real soon. So don't spoil anything for me. I'm, I'm, excited. I'm actually excited to see that movie. Uh, that's one. Uh, a Vigilante, let's talk about that. So I um, came across it by accident. The film, I didn't, I didn't realize it came out in 20, 2018. Um, and it was shown in different film festivals and stuff like that. I was really pleasantly surprised by this film. It's an independent film-ish. It has that feel of a very indie. In other words, there's a thing about, and for me, when I see independent films, you can, you know, uh, you can sort of pick up on the inner workings of a independent film where there's a lot of scenes have a lot of breathing room. Uh, there's a lot more uh, introspection with the characters, and there's a lot more room for things to organically happen. It seems like we, um, you don't have the same sort of um, restrictions that you may come across in other blockbuster films. Um, that said, let's talk about what this film is about. It, and, and it's a really important film, I think, because it deals with primarily domestic, domestic abuse, domestic violence. And so Olivia Wilde's character, uh, Sadie, she's a woman who is a survivor of her own domestic abuse. Uh, she uses her, the pain that she went through and turns that into her power as she goes around helping other victims of domestic abuse. That's essentially the story. That's what, we've, that's what we're working with. The reason it's an important film, I think, because this film tackles the issue very, it takes it very seriously. It's like, um, I want to say, it's, it's like a, a, any vigilante film that's much more, that vigilante films t typically tend to be grounded in a kind of reality, even if it's heightened. Um, it's grounded somewhere that is in a super relatable place. You don't have people that has, have superpowers doing stuff, and yet you have real people who are displaying power, but um, in very human human terms. Sadie's essentially, uh, she talked about, Olivia Wilde talked about in interviews that she wanted to be Batman, uh, and this is the Sadie character, is sort of her way of being able to, to sort of do that, uh, which is I thought was a really cool way to think about Sadie. She, it's, in a lot of ways, it's the film plays, it's like a superhero origin story, complete with tragic um, uh, inciting incident of what is the why that this character does what they're, what they're doing. Uh, this film has all of that. Yet, it also has, it takes time to really take the issue of domestic abuse very seriously. It goes very far by including actual victims of domestic abuse in the film, sharing their stories, uh, and you believe it. You don't, you don't buy into it because it's like, oh, they want to sell the authenticity of it. These people are real. Uh, and if you've ever, I think if you've ever witnessed domestic abuse, experienced it yourself, uh, I'm going to tell you personally uh, that you may be in for uh, something. You may be hit emotionally uh, if you've experienced anything like that in life and you watch this movie. I was. I really appreciated how, how, how much care that the filmmakers took in taking the issue of domestic abuse seriously. So that's the, I think that was the real um, uh, takeaway for me. As a film, there's a lot of really cool things that go on in this film that I think m set it apart from other films that have vengeance or revenge in some sort, some form uh, in it. Uh, particularly in the ways that uh, violence is depicted or not depicted. This film actually doesn't show a lot of violence. There are, 
maybe a, a few fights, a handful of fights. There are not a lot of action in this in this movie, which is surprising for a film called A Vigilante. You expect someone doing something like Charles Bronson's character did in, in uh, the original Death Wish. He was taken the law into his own hands. His family was 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 murdered, and he went out there and 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 was a was a was a vigilante. Sadie. As a vigilante, she doesn't do the same thing. Like you saw the violence in Death Wish, you saw these things. Sadie, you you get in this film you get examples of her knowledge of how to use her physical power in a way to get what she wants, to get the outcome that she is um, shooting for. That said, you don't, there's not a, a whole lot of elaborate uh, fight choreography. There's none of that kind of stuff. You have little moments. She may attack someone here, do something here, but it's not. It's it's just enough to let you know that this that she's she's not playing around. She's very serious. Uh, you don't know what she's gone through. You don't know, don't mess with her. That's that's what this is about. So I really appreciated how different it was in that way. It plays very much like an old like a. Um, uh, which I didn't think about this. I think I read this somewhere else, or I heard it somewhere else that it's like a uh, a western, and I was like, oh, that's totally what it feels like. You have this character who's going from place to place, helping different people, and then going back into her own area to you know recuperate and do what she needs to do, whatever it is, and then goes back out when she gets a call to go and and help someone else. And I thought, oh, this is that's that's it. And that way, it's just like. Batman or any other hero character that's using their uh, natural abilities and then honed abilities, things that they learned over time to help other people. That said, as we all know with vigilantes, you may be helping people, but it may not always be coming from a selfless place. This is something that the person is dealing with too. Like you, Batman, for instance, Bruce Wayne is deeply traumatized. He's dealing with the loss of his parents all the time. Like he's com he's in constant grief. He's constantly angry. He's, you know, that is what continues to drive him. He does not want to see what happened to him happen to anybody else. So he's both. There's a there's a there's a personal reason for doing that. He's always going to be little Bruce Wayne, in that way. That, and that's why he's moving the way he's moving. He's never gotten past that stage of his life when his parents were taken from him. Sadie, similarly, she's gone through something very traumatic. Uh, she's been through years of domestic abuse on top of that. And she's deeply scarred. She's The film actually shows her, she's not just beating up people and doing stuff and she's all powerful, whatever. It shows her actually crumbling sometimes under that grief. She's grieving, she's in, pain constantly and she's wrestling with that and the film shows that and I really appreciated how it did that it showed you how she's still she, she's still very human she's still she's still hurting no matter how strong she's become no matter how much she's learned over the, over the distance in between when she l got out of the domestic abuse situation and came to where she is. She's always, she, she's shaped by that, by the domestic experience, by the domestic abuse. Who she is now, when we see her in the film, is a product of that. So that is the thing that I think is really important about uh, domestic abuse in general, and why I think the film is really cool, because not only does it touch on that, but it also has the, the entertainment factor of it, but it's, it's done differently. It's cool to see, like she, so she is like a, she is like a superhero, how they, how she's depicted, but she's very human, and as a, as someone who's, who's experienced and who's witnessed domestic abuse, uh, I, I really appreciated how it shows you how a victim and a survivor of domestic abuse can still can can move beyond it but how you are shaped by that like how the wh whoever you are when people meet you is as a result of all those experiences that got you to wherever that is you're still on some form even if, if it's unconscious i think dealing with that wrestling with that how you got through that and all of that and i think that's super that's why i think the film was 
one of the reasons why I think the film was, was excellent. And I think, now let's talk performances. Olivia Wilde, obviously, she's the star of the show. She kills this, this role. <laughs> I've never seen her actually in anything like, quite like this. I remember her from House when I, when I first started, you know, really paying attention to who she was and she was good on that show. And, you know, I'd seen her a little bit. I, I don't remember, I think I've, I haven't seen Cowboys and Aliens all the way through, but I remember her from that film and, you know, she's, she's okay. But this film really, she's, she really hit me emotionally with her performance in this film. She was, she came with it. And, um, you know, I think really, you know, she, she really carries the movie and she, I just, I, I can't say enough good things about her performance and, um, and how she, in, in all aspects, in her displaying her power, in her displaying her pain, and really being vulnerable, and being vulnerable in the way that people who are sharing with you their experiences of pain or whatever it is are. And you see that with some of the actual real life victims who were in the film who get to show that dynamic in a way. And that was that's really cool to see that that sort of thing portrayed in that way. Uh, so yeah, she was awesome. I think the writing was is great. There's not a whole lot of, again, there's not a lot of dialogue. There's not a whole bunch of snappy dialogue. There's not a whole bunch of like fighting and action and stuff. I think how it's written uh, leaves room for Sadie to, while she's doing her, you know, vigilante work, there's also a lot of space for her to decompress from that and sort of unwind and examine, self-examine. We get to see the toll that what she's doing, how, what that takes, what it takes for her to do that. She has to continuously get herself in the space to go and continue to help people. That's serious business to me. I just, yeah, I think it's, it's, an, it's an amazing film. And I think that if I, I it's, a, it's a nine, 10, I think, nine or 10. I can't decide what I, you know what? I'm giving it a 10. I really enjoyed the film. And um, I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. Definitely take a look at it. Um, oh, also real quickly, cinematography is, is gangster. Uh, it's just, it was very well shot. Just very well done, very well done film. Uh, and um, yeah, I highly recommend it. Uh, check it out. That's it. That's all my. That's all I'm going to say on that. I'm going to leave it there. I want to know what you guys think. If you have seen that film, let me know. I want to. I'd love to have a conversation about it. Uh, and if you haven't, I recommend you see it. Thank you for listening to my thoughts on this film. You know, I really appreciate your time. I will be back with another video really soon. In the meantime, take it easy. I'm out of here.